Hi everybody, it's Anna Banana with Banana Split Studios here to teach you all a Black History Month painting. So uh, as you know, it's Black History Month and I wanted to do something that would represent how far we've come and what I believe Black History Month means to me, for all of us actually. Um, so we're gonna be doing a piece that incorporates many hands. <laughs> So what you'll need is your canvas, and you'll need a palette. Don't mind mine, it's used. You'll need brushes, any size will do, but I have a, a large brush, a medium brush, a slanted angle brush, and a skinny pencil pointed style brush here. That's what you'll need. Along with your brushes, you'll need your paint. I wanna use some colors that represent black history. So um, Africa's colors, of course, you know, you have your, your red, your green, and your black. And of course, my fave, some gold, burnt orange, just some warm tone colors all together. A little bit of everything. Yeah, a little bit of everything. All these, all these beautiful colors. And then I have some skin tone colors for my hands that we'll be painting. So I have my browns, my warm mochas, and a little bit of a lighter creamy color. And yeah, that's all you're gonna need today. It's a simple piece, but I thought it was just something fun and festive, something quick and easy, just to be in the spirit of black history. <laughs> so, um, happy you're here, and let's get started. Welcome again. This is Anna Banana with Banana Split Studios, and we're about to start our Black History Month painting. As you see, I've already drawn and traced out the hands that we're going to be painting today. I want to do an abstract piece. So I wanted to, um, and I'm using an old canvas, so if you're wondering like, oh, what's up with this canvas of hers? Um, it's used, it previously had a painting on it that I really wasn't um, crazy about keeping, and I just wanted to um, transform this piece into something different. Um, so what I did was go ahead and I had a permanent marker you can use any type of marker you can use a pencil if you want doesn't matter and what I did was place my hands in random places and I went ahead and just traced around them and I did about four hands so you see I got one two three four um, in random places and the hands I believe represents the hands that we have used and the work that we have done to get to the place that we are now. Black history has come so far, over 400 years of slavery, all the growth that we've made over the years, Black Wall Street, uh, farming, George Washington Carver, learning how to read, um, learning how to work together, Black Lives Matter, like we've just, we've come so far. So I want to create something that represents how far we've come with the hands we've used to build ourselves to this place. So again, don't forget all your materials, which I have, and I'm just gonna go ahead and start placing some colors on a palette, no particular fashion, form, or order. Just some colors, and I'm just gonna do like a quarter size on my palette. Just gonna add some color. Got my yellow, I got my um, red, I have some black here. And I'm using acrylic paint today, which is the medium that I love to use. The medium that I love, 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 love. It's easy to paint with, you can always change it. Flesh tone colors out here that 
that show um, where we've come as African Americans, absolutely so far, so, so far. And some, um, that's more like a brighter red. And I have some green that I want to use as well. Let me, oh, goodness gracious. Sometimes you have splatter like that. You know, I'm just glad it didn't get on me. Um, I haven't used this <laughs> green in a long time, so that's why it came out like that. But yeah, these are my colors. And what I want to do is do the background first. So around my fingers, around my hands, and then I'll fill in the hands with my flesh tone colors. And just to, you know, spot where I want to do different things. Well, you know, I won't worry about that actually right now. Um, but if you want to spot color your hands, just so you know what not to paint. You can take your brown and just dab it in that area. Say, you know, that hand's gonna be brown. And then you can go for a little mocha and put it on this area. You know, that hand's gonna be some mocha color. I'm gonna do a little uh, orange um, here, a little burnt orange. And I'll make that flesh tone color um, with a few others. And then do our cream. Make sure we have a little bit of a lighter tone, flesh tone there. And we'll come back to it, right? Make sure you have a cup of water nearby to clean your brush off. I'm just gonna use a towel today to clean my brush. Hope you all are excited. Hope you guys are enjoying your Black History Month. Um, so far, um, we already have some golden tones at the top, so I'll go ahead and use that as a guide for my background. And I wanna do, like I said, abstract. So I'm going to do like geometric shapes sort of behind it. So if you want to, you can sort of trace how you're gonna break off your colors in the background with your um, with your marker. You can do some uh, squiggle lines, what have you. Um, you can do straight lines coming across, dividing areas where you're going to paint come down just get real creative with it remember there's no format no guideline to how you want to do this painting you just want to be creative but you just want to break up some of those areas in the background so you know where to paint and where not to. If you wanna stay in the lines or if you don't. So I'm doing a little bit of everything right now. A little bit of everything. And if you're wondering like, well, is the paint gonna come up, cover up this marker? Um, You can definitely make sure that the paint does cover up the marker definitely can um because at the end i would love to make our painting pop so we'll use our smallest brush the skinny 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 pencil like brush to outline our fingers and outline our our abstract uh, background so let's get started i'm gonna uh, stick with my brush and i'm going to get my gold and I'm gonna go ahead and try not to move this as much so you all can see. But I'm going to go ahead and paint my background gold. Fill that in. And I do sweeping motions. And I'll probably have to do more than one coat on this area just because this, this yellow is not that bright. Actually, I probably could mix it with the gold. I have a gold over here too mix it with it get it to become a lot brighter a lot bolder but what we'll do is do a coat first and then we'll let it dry I'm gonna fill this in and I'm just going around the fingers and staying inside the abstract lines from the background if you go over the line a little bit it's okay acrylic paint is so heavy that when you paint over a surface you can go, once it dries, you can paint over it with another color and it'll go away. You might have to do a coat or two, but 
No bigs. No bigs at all. So there's our first section filled out. And I'm just doing sweeping motions. Long stroking sweeping motions. Nothing real heavy and nothing really um, formatted. And I believe I wanna do some more yellow in another area. So I'm gonna pick another area on the canvas where there's an abstract portion between the hands. And I'm gonna paint that yellow too because I don't want the same colors everywhere. I want, um, I want the colors broken up. I don't want them in the same place. So I'm just tracing that shape and then I'm gonna fill it in with some sweeping motions. And like I said, I'm gonna have to do more than one coat on certain areas. Absolutely fine, no bigs. We'll come back to it, but we gotta let it dry first. So I filled that in as best as I could, and moving on. I think I want to clean my brush off from the yellow, and I'm gonna grab another shade. Let's do a deep red. I'm gonna do a deep red. Across this background and this whole section, I'm gonna fill in this area. I'm gonna do some spot coloring so I know where to fill in. Sometimes you can lose your place, you get carried away, but this way, and this red is very deep um, in color and, um, and pigment. So it's giving me the coverage that I absolutely desire in this style of painting, it being abstract. So I'm tracing the area with the brush, just like a pencil. Sometimes people get um, a little uh, apprehensive, but in sections with abstract, you can trace the area and then fill it in. And look how gorgeous that is. Oh, this deep red is beautiful, like a rouge. And now I'm gonna fill in the other portion. Again, like I said, you trace it. So if it looks like a triangle, you trace it like a triangle, like an upside down triangle. Fill it in, trace, and then you fill it in. Sometimes you don't even have to lift up your brush. Sometimes you just drag the brush to the stopping point, and then you fill it in with the, some long um, holding strokes there. Hold that brush down and drag. Next section, hold the brush down and drag. Tracing that finger. This is gonna be one of my coolest pieces yet. Not done any abstract pieces in a while. Um, so this is gonna be neat. And I like what it represents. Make sure you all are learning something new about Black history. Um, I'm making it a point to teach my class something new every week. So far, we, we've read a Langston Hughes poem, Harlem, talking about the Renaissance, that whole era where he was in Harlem, and he talked about how rough it was. What happens when a dream's deferred? And it was very convicting because you think about your own life and it's like, have there been dreams that I have that de were deferred? It said, what happened to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun? Does it, does it stink like rotten meat? He gives all these examples on what can happen when your dream literally is postponed, delayed. And you have to think about that. Now, he was really talking about the times in Harlem, like what was going on in a time where, in the 20s, where it was impoverished. People were being kicked out of their homes. They were being, it was gentrification going on like crazy. It used to be a, 
uh, I, I looked up some information and Harlem used to be a predominantly Jewish location for immigrants. And then it migrated to a Puerto, Puerto Rican community from which it left that community and then became predominantly black. So the gentrification started sort of entering in a little bit late 1900s and became mostly white as they pushed African Americans out. But African Americans are the ones that made the greatest impact culturally, culturally in that era because they brought up music like jazz. Um, that was um, a time in Harlem where Martin Luther King had a, a assassination attempt on his life. Um, different things that took place, pivotal things. Malcolm X was there during that era. Um, many others. But um, learning about that was interesting for me and my students. And I, I, I was getting them to discuss what it would be like now if our dreams were deferred. And I um, definitely pointed out the fact that a lot of our dreams did get deferred. And we got uh, slammed with Corona. No one knew what was gonna happen. People had to put a lot of things on pause and postpone. But I was encouraging them to not let those dreams die. Don't let it be like the poem said, um, like Langston Hughes said, is it, don't let it stink like rotten meat. Use whatever time that you're in to make the best of your opportunity. And that's what I've done. 2020 did not bruise me, wreck me, um, kill me. It didn't kill me. Did I, you know, have to postpone some plans? Yes. Did I not get to take the trips that I wanted to? Yes. Um, however, I'm still here. I'm healthy. My family is safe. Um, I've lost family members, yes. Um, but I'm still here and I'm thankful for my life. Um, and I'm thankful for the life that they lived while they were here. Um, not everyone was passing away from Corona. There was just natural, natural deaths taking place. But not being able to mourn with your family during this time because of travel restrictions that they they have. Um, you know, those are some of the things that we've had to deal with just to survive within the mind, our bodies and souls. Um, but this has been, um, like, I asked my friends, you know, those of, those who are my age, did you think we would have to go through this? Like, this is the type of stuff we read in history books, like when the plague hit. And it's like, you mean we're going through this? Like we're gonna be in the history books? But you never just, you just don't know. So it's good to live a life of gratitude, a life of opportunity and community based. I've been so thankful for my community during this time. My church family, they give every Tuesday. Um, and I go and I volunteer and I love it. I love volunteering. I was raised volunteering. My mother raised me um, to volunteer and to help others and to give back. Um, and I've had an opportunity to do that even in Corona. Even in Corona, making an impact. At my church, we say making it better. So I'm thankful that I've been able to make it better. And, you know, it's just what we're going through and what we have to deal with. But better days are coming. I do believe that. And if you don't feel it, make it a better day. Get yourself up. Make yourself look good. Call friends, check on family, do something fun. There are things that you can still partake in, like this, like painting. You know, how many people have been creative during this time period? And then how many of you have taken a rest? You know, you didn't have to absolutely, you didn't have to build a machine. 
a lot of people, you know, there's those memes that go around that say, it's okay if you didn't, you know, do a pod, create a podcast. It's okay if you didn't, you know, have some type of great invention. It's okay. But as long as you have made the best of your time period during this pandemic, that's what matters. That you're keeping yourself safe mentally and your body, your strength. You have any newfound loves. It's nothing wrong with creating. Creating makes you, um, gives you purpose when you can create. When you can make something and leave it on the earth. One thing I always wanted to do is die empty. If, if when and the time comes that it, my end has come, I want to know that I left it all here. I want to leave it all here. And I believe that is a good black history. Uh, I guess I would say... Uh, what was done for us. They left it all here. They, Martin Luther King, they left it all here. Malcolm X, they left it all here. They gave us what we needed to survive. They gave us that, that inspiration to pour out into our communities and make it better. Almost there, guys. This is so fun. I'm really enjoying myself creating this piece. I can see it coming together so beautifully. How the colors are popping, that abstract nature it has. It's beautiful. Very beautiful. And come out Sunday. We have to, uh, we're having a, a paint party. Um, an online virtual paint party at Creative Suitland. And I'll be here in my studio. And we'll be doing another painting like this for Black History Month. So, come out. If you want to learn this piece, you want to do something creative, you need to do something with your kids on Sunday, please join us. You can register at Creative Suitland um, in the bio on Instagram, you can go to, yeah, you can go to Instagram, you can go to my bio as well, it's in my bio, the link is in my bio to register, um, we accept donations, um, it's not a, a large expense, it's, it's donation based, which is awesome, so it, there's no excuse for you not to be able to create with us, if you really desire to do it, go ahead, join us, should be excluded. Join in, join in, join in. Link is in the bio at Banana Split Studios. And you can go to Creative Suitland. Or you can get on Eventbrite. We're on Eventbrite. And you want to sign up for Sunday's class. It's uh, flow, paint and flow. So the first portion of the session um, starts at 4 o'clock. And you'll be doing yoga with Malachi. Spirit thug, the spiritual thug. <laughs> um, on Instagram, that's his name, spiritual thug. Um, you'll want to add him. He has a great flow for creativity, um, great body movement for um, the mat and the floor. If you're not a yoga person, I dare you. I dare you to join. I dare you to try it. Um, it's new, it's fun, and it's. Um, it's so stress-free. Like, it's relaxing like none other. I love yoga. It's one of my practices I do on my own in my own spiritual time. Definitely makes me feel really energized and free. So we've, we've gotten somewhere somewhere we're, we're doing this thing we are doing this thing oh 
goodness gracious, I definitely need to put another coat of yellow. of our beauty, we have also conquered so much. We have conquered so much. I believe those who endure more are stronger. It doesn't feel good when you go through, but it definitely bears fruit. Half the world knows. Uh, they know. And that's why we've always been pinpointed. That's okay. We are stronger and we are better for it. We're more creative. Because of what we've gone through. joy and happiness and in our pain. We can turn it into beauty. We can turn it into laughter. Turn it into art. Black is beautiful. Black is strong. Black is bold. Look how they are. Just a little bit of black on this, and already we pop it. Already we pop it. Last thing we'll do is our hands. We'll do every shade we can. So here we are now at our creative portion uh, for detailing. I'm outlining the hands with the black and going to do some little designs here and there on different areas of this painting just so it does pop and you have that very um, bold Design. So I'm just gonna speed this up a little bit. You want to outline? You want to use 
a small pencil light. This is a good size brush. And if you don't wanna do that, you can always use a Sharpie to outline or design. Different ways you can be creative, different ways that you can outline, tricks that you can use for your painting because acrylic does have a texture where you can definitely draw on top of it with a marker, permanent marker um, specifically. So yeah, keep watching and I'll see you guys in a bit. And that's it guys. That's our finished product. Our hands reaching culture. And that's it. I hope you all enjoyed today's black history piece with the cultural hands um, reaching out and connecting together um, via virtual or whatever platform you're watching this on. Um, I'm happy that you joined me. I'm appreciative. And I hope you all enjoyed your masterpiece. Your cultural hands reaching out. So beautiful. <laughs> yes. Um, so beautiful with our African shades of color. And our tribal prints on our hands. And each hand a different color. Because we have grown with black history to appreciate all the hands that it takes to be a growing nation of equality. That's what that represents. So, I hope you all enjoyed yourselves and happy Black History Month 2021. Go do something fun and special with your friends. Bring everybody together virtually and paint this masterpiece. Happy you guys came with me, Anna Banana with Banana Split Studios, and I'll see you again on our next tutorial. Peace out.